You know that 1.35 and domination DLC is changing a lot for Emperor of China, especially Ming. But you probably saw plenty of Ming campaigns already, and that's why I would prefer to focus today on showing you something completely different, which I was always staying away from because it wasn't really nice gameplay. So Chinese warlords. I'm gonna release myself of one of the Chinese miners trying to beat Ming and unify whole China with their new unique missionary. That's gonna be fun, trust me. Anyway guys, I would like to thank you for hitting 110,000 subscribers, that's much of support, I love you. And of course, if any of you is not subscribing yet, this is a perfect moment to do so because there's plenty of 1.35 content coming and you gotta get notified about this thanks to the subscription. We are inside the game, of course, we've got the current state of the Ming affairs, uh, yeah which is just telling us that we have high autonomy in uh, multiple provinces but most importantly I could very easily make my goal here by just releasing all of the vassals of Ming which is almost whole China and that would be super easy then but I don't want to do that I want to have more challenge right so to make that happen I will take a few years to develop the provinces of the future Shun because that's what I'm gonna play and then I'm gonna release them and only them so we're having to you know face the full force of china anyway in ideal scenario as you might know there are plenty of new decrees that can be done and i think i'm gonna use one right away with the development cost as well as i'm thinking about the celestial reform for another development cost which will take 80 of the mandate so pretty much all of it I don't think uh, that's something that uh, we won't be able to survive, so no worries about that. Then we're gonna go and take the 1% loans from these boys, because we need to be able to have enough money for level 3 advisors. The tax guy, and that's gonna be the perforation guy, and that's also gonna be more of armies guy then get all of them level 3 see not paying much so it's easy peasy and then finally I'm gonna take some privileges from Eunux so this is you know a new unique estate that China got that Ming Emperor of China got with plenty of privileges and I'll go for one specific that is giving us another development cost and you see with 59% ownership of the crown land it's 8.8% death cost. I could also try getting these guys over 60, but I don't think that's gonna happen. So let's just go and play around with what we have. By the way, from all of these boys, I'm gonna go ahead and try getting mill points. Of course, from the nine nations that are big enough to give me points, but you can see that's plenty of them. That's gonna be so much mana that we have for deving. All of this will give me mill points. How about we ask a couple of them also for some Diplo points to dev the production. If I turn off all of my armies, yeah, that's gonna fix the balance a lot. I could remove calf as well, but I, that would make my game easier. So I'm gonna keep calf in the hands of AI. There it goes to the first event. Lose to stability and the, the decreased power of Onus. All get corruption but gain stability. Well, let's get it to zero. And Hajim policy of the Great Wing. Trade efficiency is just spread, but some sheep. Okay, or. Okay, if you want to improve the existing policy of isolation or if you want to repeal it. How about we go and repeal it? Guys, look, we might already have some problems with rebels because, ah, the negative mandate. You know what? We have to find an advisor here for the national unrest and then also some boost stability to one. Su Luo is giving us meritocracy and prestige. Let's go for stability to get rid of uh, plenty of rebels already. Oh yeah, yeah. the 1445 Yang River Vlad, well, <laughs> I might ruin this thing a little bit before we go into Shun, but I don't want to completely kill them. Well, that's 10 uh, mandate lost, we just got five of it. And that's also lost to stability and devastation. But then I got Yushun Sima, so it's like a royal coaster. Positive and negative events. That's all the stability that we could get. So yes, please go ahead and get back to zero. I could have used first my mana to boost it, but we don't have to be fully efficient. We're not gonna play Mink long term. How the rebel? Yeah, that fixes the rebel situation. See, my local autonomy is ever like 20. And this is because 
See, Administrative Overextension, which is the modifier that we are having at the start as Ming. Oh, and then we go on to Encourage Development here. I'm interested. What? Ah, this is all mountains. This costs me so much to develop, but let's see. Why this is 45? Yeah, I don't have enough modifiers for the dev cost, but it's still pretty good. Just dev it up to 20 already. And the power of tributes, as we are gonna hit January, so you see how much mana we will get. How about I switch more of them to Diplo points? So you're gonna death with Diplo and Meal points, of course. The tax meta is not something that I'm gonna be embracing. Let's take a look. 71, so it's gonna be 78. And 59, 67, 92. Very nice. Looks like these two processes are gonna be the cheapest to develop. I'm just gonna dev them to 10, and this also to 10 soon. Because I got devastation from the event, I'm actually losing mandate right now. I guess it's gonna be fine. This is really not something fun. Because, uh, look, Miao, Shi, and Jin promises are gonna get tons of unrest, and I lose stability again. <laughs> I actually love this event, but they make the, like, the Chinese gameplay actually tough. Look at this sunrise. I'll also make sure to have no corruption, because remember when you risk yourself as a vassal, I'm pretty sure you take over corruption of your country. You know, why I'm regaining the mandate for AI. Quick reminder what happens when you have only 5 of it. Get plus 4 national unrest, minus 40% manpower, minus 40% mercenary manpower, minus 44% goods produce modifier, liberty subject subjects is 26%, fire damage received is increased by 40%, shock damage received is also increased by 44%. So it all hurts as hell. That's why I'm trying to fix it ASAP, then be boosting stability to one soon. First service are here, and if I want to troll AI, I'll, uh, you know, remove my troops and let rebels occupy everything, but we're not gonna be lame. I want to have some of actual challenge. I already decreased it by, you know, taking a reform and dropping the mandate, but I think it still won't be easy. Okay, guys, I think this is the moment. Just occupy this province from rebels. We're gonna go ahead and release play ourselves as Shun. That will give us 11 provinces. In exactly that area, I can start with, you know, power points given to every state. Then I'm gonna choose my country for which I can choose whatever I want, but I will go for the Chinese kingdom because it gives manpower recovery speed, unify China castle's belly, gaff capacity, and most importantly, huge liberty desire. Take also the harmony increase, reform progress growth. Why from the nobility I will take? And it's a tough choice, honestly. I will go for supremacy over the crown, just to keep everyone loyal. Why from these boys this will be prestige, as well as the one person loans. And it's saying I will go bankrupt because of it? Ah, because I could take three loans and I took... And I took three of them, okay. I could have looked first. We need a mouthtick to organize everything. I'll send one merchant to Xi'an or Xi'an and one to Yumen. I think that's gonna update everything. Yeah, income is a bit higher. I can also take farm loans. Take a diet, stability, no, empire, no. We pay loans. I think I actually might not go for empire. I'll just probably go for loans. I'll repay them for the war with uh, Mink. For now, just no. I don't have to seize land with that amount of crown land. That's oh, two, three, two is it's this complete RNG. This is complete trash stats. I've seen better on that Estran, but strict is you know helping a little bit. Let's go for the discipline guy. Let's go for the trade efficiency guy as well as yearly no inflation reduction. See, I'm losing money mainly for paying for forts. We'll have three of them. I think I don't need a fort. No, I, I'll need all three of them. Let's just turn them off to save money. And that's gonna be just enough. I can also straight away start uh, making uh, Spinal Troco Ming. And uh, I'll change my bonus here in Xi'an for the spy network construction. Now you see, we have a little mission tree that is for Chinese warlords. That's part of this DLC. 
I need to grow my development by 100. Well, that's not gonna happen right away, but this will happen. I have to insult Mink and get my army 80% of force to meet. That gives me manpower, a gas tier general, and if we complete this mission while having already 25% war score against Mink in the Independence War, we advance our tech by one. So if I focus right now on getting tech four, declare the war and start winning, I will get my technology to level five right away. That's what I'm definitely gonna plan here, especially that remember Bing is having 111 ruler, which uh, will make them very slow in taking the technology. <laughs> that was fast! <laughs> Because you remember, when you have an inflation trade, guys, you can spawn radical reforms, which is either mercantilism, 200 admin mana, 200 diplo points, or 400 power points in total. But that gets uh, you know the advisors out of the court. But I can just fire them, take the power points, and get these advisors back. New air, which is gonna be. Oh, 346 is really good. Uh. Oh, you just attacked me! Well, that is good. That is good and not good, you know, because I've got devastation, blah, blah, blah. Instead of being stable, but, well, that is gonna hurt Ming for sure. So, you know, the weaker Ming, the better for us. And I think Ming is going for suicide here. Yeah. Can I reinforce, you know, 27 days to reinforce? And they capture the Minx Emperor. That gives them 20% more of armies and 25% of his ability. So my force is just gonna die. Uh, can I at least try fighting Mongolia? They attack free. I don't think I'm gonna win here without China. <laughs> I feel like I'm gonna get fully sieged out in this war. These guys are not so willing to win. I mean, if they are just next by. Yes. Come and reinforce me. Maybe we can push them back at least from this. This province, yeah. Remember, Mink is absolute trash with no mandate. Oh, do they have already more troops than us? Not yet. At least I have defensive headaches, so they switch abilities not doing that much here, but this fort will go down any moment now. My tier 2 guarantee for is gonna be obviously the tax metal. Oh, maybe rather manpower. Mink is already down to 30 key troops. We're gonna lose this war hard. Zhang, yes, the war goal, and now our province is back in our hands. I think I'll just stay here and do nothing now. Guys, Mink has zero, zero troops. <laughs> Can I declare independence for them? I should be able to, right? But our truce ends in May. We, we declare in May. Okay, there it goes, guys. Our truce ended. I'm not gonna help you freaking. Let's go and start our own independence war. Uh, this hurts, but we gotta boost the stability back. And we just got unified China Castle's belly, which is for everyone. Let me just show you. Everyone within the Chinese subcontinent. How it works, uh, Karadel, right? How it works is that's giving us 25% AE, 150% prestige, and 50% cost for conquest of the provinces in the Chinese subcontinent. Well, we gotta go and pick this mission. No, we wait for the tech 4, then we get tech 5 immediately. And I'll also go ahead and recruit another Merc stack because we gotta push this two stacks back. Of course, I made my life over here also worse because it's only me fighting against Oryas in Mongolia. But remember, it was already only me fighting them because Ming has no troops. Doesn't matter if I go high into that right now. That's why I'm taking more loans, which I will invest into Mercs. Let's just make sure to take Mercs with good general. 2-4. Shanxi guard and they're gonna be all tech free uh, I guess it's fine just get them around here or maybe here in the back and uh, we will have to push back Oirat while fighting Ming as well anyway I've got tech 4 so right now we only need 25% of the war score against Ming to get actual technology from this mission and we have a very good scenario over here because look 
There's only 9,000 troops with a bad general. Why these guys are movement locks, so nobody will be reinforcing this. What I have to make sure of is to get there into right time. 21st April. Yeah, these guys have to wait a little bit. Do they have movement? Maneuver to 26 April. No. So they arrive there also on the 1st of May, just like these guys. 4th May. Okay. A few days late. But this can be even a wipe if you get good trolls. But it's 6 to 8. It's 3 to 0. Uh, no, it won't be a 4 to 0. 4 to 2. Yeah. But it's a good battle for us. They are losing more troops than. Uh, we are, and now we gotta find this Mongolia stack. As I push them back, I'm gonna scorch Earth here. Yeah, I will scorch Earth here because that will help me in the future battles. This guy's lost all of this. Yeah, I have to reinforce them. Um, let's go and try fighting Xi'an with this 10,000. Just make sure. God, my mercs have no troops. This 2,000 might be actually the easiest to wipe. And then we'll deal with these two stacks. Once I get them low attitude, maybe I'll be able even to take a province or two. No, I will have to occupy a fort. Uh, let's just get more wars go first. Can I wipe them here? See, it's going to the right direction. I think yes. Very good. But they still have tons of the troops to deal with. Please don't say they're gonna take this fort over here on 7%. That would be like super unfortunate. But I think I still should be able to win before anyone reinforces, especially that these guys are running around the province that has Scorched Earth. They did not see this down. Let me just go ahead and win the battle. Hopefully. Because these guys will be here on the 12th March. Can I win before that? <sighs> no, I can't. We gotta run away. But look, they're still taking more losses, so... All your troops are down to 10,000 already. Mongolia is having 12,000. Why aren't you disloyal? You know what? Uh, I'll let them... Yeah, siege this down. I couldn't defend it and go for another fort. And I'll start capacitating China to get my war score to 25%, so I'll go strictly to take 5. That little break allowed me to recover some of my troops. So right now I'm up to 22,000 of them. Do I still have tech advantage? I do. And see, it only needs 5% war score on China. But you see how fast they go into our country. I gotta go and push them back. And the Yellow River flat. Yeah, of course. Let's just go and wipe them Xi'an. Because I'm pretty sure this is gonna be a wipe. Obviously, Shiv consolidated before joining the battle to make sure we fight with our full strength. And this should be really an easy, not busy guide. I've lost so many more troops. I know this is farmlands, but still, Mong oh, Mongolia, disloyal. They're not gonna help anymore. B E A beautiful. How about Shiba? Shiba is an ally, but we might make Shiba low attitude, you know, in some time. So you see, forty-nine point four rebels have Mongolia, so they are sitting me down again. No, God, please, no, no. I just need to decrease some of the troops of Oirat a little bit. And to do that, I can now take this, which means uh, technology for us, as well as... Why? If you complete this mission, why you have 25% war score during our independence war, we'll get technology, right? Independence war? 25% nothing I got trolled and I got trolled hard by the mission not working as it should but I guess it's fine at least this leader is 5-3 I think if I wipe Shiba troops this ones and this ones I might be able to white piece them out of the war because they had already a medium attitude yep see 19 against 18 thank you so much we gotta go and keep wiping troops of Oirat uh, while, of course, I need a stack to start switching down back the war goal. And you know, this way Oirat is down to 5,000 troops. <laughs> you guys are so screwed now! Looks like Mink is coming back from that. 
they start building troops and researching their promises, I'm just gonna send this one merc stack to deal with them. So now again, reminder, if I wanted to go and conquer whole China with as a Chinese warlord, probably by 1460 we could conquer half of it. But that wasn't the goal. I wanted to have, you know, a more challenging start and more fun thanks to this. And I think Oirat attacking us made it even more fun. With capital of Oirat taken, I could piece it out for a couple of provinces. Maybe something like that. A bit less money. Yep. Maybe this with a bit less money. Just for better borders. Screw you, Oirat. Start. I just for exhaustion start coring everything. In my first war against being I'm taking full money, war operations and independence. No provinces because we're gonna get these provinces a bit easier later. That's also a shorter truce, you know, it's gonna end in 11 years from now. This amount of money allows me to repay all of our loans and still have 1.2 thousand nuggets. Yes, Ming, I completely destroy your empire, get independence, you have 8,000 troops and you guarantee me. It's just, it's just a joke. First one, look, Ming is independent and I think there are more coming. But look, how interesting is Japan, Ashikaga? It keeps expanding and getting terrains of its daimyos. I might start looking for allies and Korea is a perfect guy for that because look, Chagara is expanding around us, we gotta be cautious. Honestly, as I concurred some uh, of the Tengu promises, I gotta go and uh, harmonize them. That's gonna be actual man, national honors for us. Tech 5 is here, I'm super late. That unlocks us the first idea group, which is gonna be... I only really think about court ideas for the mandate growth modifier, but not so sure if I'm gonna use any of other of here. I also have tons of mill points I could spend. So we could go for, for example, offensive ideas to get force limits, uh, discipline, switchability. Not so sure. Not mercs. I don't want to. I'm playing Swiss mercs campaign already, right? You know what? I will go for offensive. And then I will take court ideas because together they are giving us a policy for morale damage and power protection from insults. It should be of use. Let's go for offensive first. Tier 3 government reform is gonna be definitely reform progress growth. By the way, you might be thinking, does Shun have its own unique ideas? Yes, it does. Great Shun ideas. It's production efficiency, manpower prestige, manpower cover speed, diplo rep, interest per annum, stab cost more of armies, siege ability, infantry command ability, and mandate growth modifiers. So these are okay ideas. They're not broken, but they're also not useless. Look, Korea actually has renaissance already. I assume yeah, I don't have enough balance for them to sell it to us. Well, I'll probably anyway abdicate for the 346 ruler. That of course breaks our prestige, our stability, but I think in the end it's definitely worth it. I just might want to change our focus to admin. And Oira just attacked Ming, but uh, my truce ends also in just in one second in July. We gotta get into their terrain ASAP because uh, I want to block Oira from taking anything. Of course I'm going for the take Mandate of Heaven Castles battle, which is Less, I guess, expansion and cheaper cost for the province. You know, guys, even if I wanted the mandate of heaven, I can't do it from Ming because currently Min is the emperor of China. So I might make sure to get a border with them in this peace deal by focusing on getting it to Beijing with good borders and as much money as possible. But it's baby steps, guys, baby steps. That's gonna be a bit of a border gore. Let's go for this. Cutting off uh, some Ming's uh, provinces. Now, do we want to release Qi over here? Just to save a bit. And also go below 100 of our extension, so that's easy peasy. That gives us solidify our domain, which is co-creation cost and uh, monthly war exhaustion. And then I could also go for this, but of course I would have to dev Beijing for that. I mean, that won't be a problem. We just need more prestige. Let's not slow down Mr. Min. Let's go for take mandate of having Castle's belly. That will lose my alliance with Korea. 
but I guess it's worth. I have got Taiwan, guys, not to be exact. Tunging being over here with Korea at last on low attitude, I can white piece them and get out of the war with Min, which will allow us to take not only these promises but also mandate of heaven and a bit of money. So now we are. It's actually cruising. <laughs> this is good. I can uh, get my first decree. I have to walk. Like, what do we have? Death cost, co creation cost, tax meta, state governing cost, ship staff, trade staff, uh, fort staff, oh, infantry command ability and reinforce, tech cost, mandate growth, corruption, unrest, plenty harmonization, advisor cost. Innovativeness gain reduced trade penalty non major. Oh, that's interesting. Improve relations, uh, autonomy. Okay, I think I will go for the co creation cost. Now, what's fun is that once you become Emperor of China and there are nations in China holding promises, you're getting CV on them, which is called Unify China. And when you have Mandate of Heaven, you're getting cores on the promise that you're conquering, unless they just change this. In this patch and by the way we've got Japan I think that we could test my theory by attacking Oirat yeah probably Oirat is the best pick because we still have plenty of truce with Ming how about Dave yesterday I have to have a border of him let's try this out maybe Janzu on Oirat let's go oh yeah we're gonna start losing money because we don't have Nanjing we don't have Canton we have war for the Celestial Empire so in the end, yeah, it's staying around the same level. We gotta take some more provinces from Mink in the next war. I mean, that won't be an easy war, they have 60,000 troops, but as told you earlier, we we'll like challenge. So just so you're aware of like, what Celestia Empire reform gives, prestige, calf capacity and influence of his states is decreased. I think I'm gonna take this, pay some money for increased mandate, especially that it is decreasing. I think some new nations just got released, yeah, there's Wu, there's a meow, we gotta take care of that. What is this Jagatai doing? We got maximum war score from winning battles, killed 60,000 of them. Should be that they were run, right? They are hordes. Taking all of the provinces in China, see? Zero cost of coring. That's how beautiful this castle's belly is. And see, that unlocks us Forbidden City, Stability, Manchuria. Okay. This is now giving oh mandate growth modifier. That's really nice. We gotta go and start attacking these guys ASAP. I'm getting unguarded nomadic frontier loading for us guys because of Chagatai. <sighs> I have to deal with them, but first Wu and Miao. Already never mind. Miao is a tributary state of Daiviet and it's protected by Chagatai. So I guess we gotta go and attack Chagatai instead for unified China because. 80,000 troops to take care of. Well, let me just prepare for this first. So once I become Emperor of China and unlocked all of this part of the mission tree, we gotta walk through this and find the right choices. So the main node being in Beijing, I can start transferring from Xi'an and I can start transferring from Hangzhou. Should boost our trade. Uh, it's already 5.8, which is huge. Seven, good. Good, good, good. That means I can go ahead and attack Chagat at last. He's fighting Oirat, so he might be busy in north. So got the mission to have no devastation and five death clicks here. So one, two, three, four, five. That unlocks us mission with pirate projection as well as prestige. And the mission over here, which is conqueror for a ruler. He's 32. For sure, that's also additional mill points. 300 of it. 666 thriller. Very nice. Um, yeah, I can take another one here and start preparing for the next missions. With a hard mandate, I could choose a reform, but I gotta stabilize first. Actually, you know, all of the continent is so behind. I'm nowhere close to tech 7. Nobody's ever even close to like tech 7. I'll take siege ability instead. You see, I have to occupy a province to gain a corner on it. So if I go and take my stack, 
and start carpeting all the Chinese provinces, I will not have to core anything. But first, we have to occupy them. I will be doing that with manpower troops while the mercs are gonna go and win more battles. Look, see, this is my uh, map mode right now. It's all perma claims, but we start going around. You'll see that all these provinces will become my course in one second. Starting with this one, Luzhu. Thank you so much. This is so nice. I love this mechanic. We're gonna get whole China soon. Yep, piecing it out right now. No coring cost. Take some money on top of that. I guess we're gonna course, but it's not full course. So I'll still have to pay my admin mana to fully state it. But I guess it's right, we have tons of Gav Cups that can just go ahead and start coring. And what's that? Can join Coalition of Taiviet? Well, let's go! I'm gonna actually declare war on them immediately for also unified China Cassus Belly. Oh, that made us a great power number six. Prospering times, it's uh, war. What is this province? 99, yeah, I'm not gonna. Free death. 99 autonomy, 28 devastation. Well, that's plenty of development I can get there. Birth of a new city. And then... Yeah. Yeah, that's so fun. Anyway, can attack me out because either Chagat or Divyat are gonna help them. This castle base is just so beautiful. All of these provinces, no AE, no mana to core. And borders are getting fixed. Now my truce with Ming is ending actually next year. Why I can fulfill mission conquer Xi'an, which is Chengdu. Okay, that's the Chengdu monument, which is giving me... Of course, uh, yeah, I could uh, invest it to level 1, level 2, and maybe then get it on level 3 for this battle, but... Nah. Monthly devastation for AI, yeah, nothing special. I might need to get into Taiwan. I'll also start building some galleys. Make eight, ten of them, and then of course we'll need some transport ships to get there. Let's also, what's the amount of the troops? Six thousand. Make eight of them. In the meantime, we'll start the next session of Chi. I mean, yeah, I could have waited for this strategy to kick in with all the conquests initially. I would save all of army mana, but I regret nothing. I think I might start thinking about creating some tributary states and I'll start with Janzu. Let's go have some fun in their trains. I really have to fix the situation with devastation. That's why I look for devastation map mode and build forts that could help the most, like for example over here. To deal devastation all around and for now this one I will need also something here. Look Japan is actually invading Manchuria, I love it. And uh, it's time for our first tributary state, Janzu. Just take as much money as possible to put that. They're gonna be disloyal. But improving relations should help, of course, we will need Adri mana if anything. I don't know that Wu just does not want to peace out me, even though they have 70% war score, but I don't want to peace out only for these few points, I need more. I know it hurts, but let's just take Tech 7 Admin, that unlocks us new idea group, which is gonna be as promised card ideas, power protection from insults, all this loyalty, and that's it for now. Honestly, at this point, it's taking too much time. I'm gonna attack Wu only to take, or maybe I'll attack Taiwan. Wu then, okay. Let's do it this way. I'll first attack Taiwan, so they're not gonna help Wu. And then I'm gonna attack Wu to recopy the Ming provinces into just white peace rule because we need to take the same trick on them. And look, they immediately decided to peace out uh, Ming. I guess this works for us because Ming can be annexed in a 100% peace deal, probably a little bit less, 75%. And Wu, we are next. Just we got a white peace rule right now. See that this is the 0.88 monthly because of devastation. That's why we need even more force, just to wear. This is gonna cover a lot. And this is gonna cover a lot. Integration of Qi is a slow process. 
But what a beautiful one. Yeah, there goes the white piece. So we're pretty much left with Min and Wu provinces in China. So, core all. Take both of these two. I can finish offensive ideas. That's discipline. And uh, remember, we're working on this. Obviously, I'm be behind the Miltech, but I first won the institution. Of which I've got 90% in this province here. So I'm just gonna dev it up to be present. And let it start spreading all around here. Now I'll do what I promised. So it's 52 income, 56,000 maximum power, 104 force meets. What if I go? I will regret that. But right now it's time for scaling. I want to take some time and organize the country. I'll go ahead and start decreasing autonomy wherever it's possible. That will be plenty of rebels but also help us scale the country a bit faster. So now with this, our maximum bar is 66,000, income is 60, and with 122 of force limit. It's also time to start fixing our meritocracy with higher income. I can go ahead to make all of these free advisors level three. Money situation is fine, especially that I'm spending on corruption most of the stuff. And you will see that meritocracy after the month tick will start at last increasing. Good 1500 and at last that's gonna be the last war of today's episode against Wu. Let's unify China. There we go guys, they'll be left with two provinces. But look how our main placement is good right now. That gives us a mission with Ali Mana and Nanjing monument being increased, which gives us uh, nothing really special. And there's there anything else I could state? Yes, yes, yes. Please state everything. And I think I might be close to our gaff capacity. Uh, getting there. There's also plenty of <laughs> devastation. Let's start reducing it with some new forts. Anyway guys, I think this is gonna be it for you today and if you'd like me to continue this series going for the rest of the mission tree, for example getting the old power scores over here, please let me know by liking this video and of course subscribe to the channel to get a default about the future content. Bye!